Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks for watching our UAX mobile video today. Oh, this patient came through the had some really, really tough UAX this one. Uh, we're finding this a lot. I know obviously we saw one the other day where we had uh, kind of this hairspray hardened up UAX that came through. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of patients with this really kind of tough UAX at the moment. Uh, or very soft earwax. We tend to get two extremes. Because um, earwax removal services are not being carried out here at the GP and the hospital service isn't quite back up and running yet because of uh, you know, post-COVID, uh, a lot of patients have gone a lot longer before they get their wax removed. So it either dries up like this or they've thrown everything but the kitchen sink to try and get this out. So it tends to be very, very soft. But you can see we've got the Jobson horn in here and this whole section of wax is just solid on the outside but this really soft um, material on the inside of the wax here. So the outer shell's hardened up, but you can see it is just everywhere in here. And we just need to start chipping this away, I think, looking at this, because when we try and get the Jobson horn over the, the back section of wax there, it's just a bit too high up for us to get the Jobson horn in. So we're just gonna start clearing away from the canal walls. There you go, you can see me unpeeling this from the side of the canal wall, first of all very, very slowly and gently taking this away. Don't forget, it's sensitive, the outer part of the, well, so the, the, the ear canal is quite sensitive. So if you push a little bit too hard against that skin, it can be really uncomfortable for the patient. It can feel like a, like a sharp scratching sensation. So you'll see we're just very, very slowly drawing this out, using that outer shell of wax, this harder outer shell to try and hold on to, to draw this out. Um, we're lifting now with the standard size Zolna tube here, it's not an ideal type of wax to take away with the, uh, with the Zolna tube. Because it is so hardened up on the outside edge, it holds together really, really well around the outside edge. And sometimes you'll break little bits off in the center. Uh, but the standard size Zolna tube is great for uh, harder wax, slightly softer on the surface, you know, chunks of wax to come away. This super kind of sticky wax and, the, and this hardened outside edge where it's really dry to the canal wall, you just don't get enough force with the suction to be able to hold onto it tight enough to be able to draw this out of the ear canal. So you can see just underneath here, we've got this long section of dry skin and then we've got this dry piece of wax here. Look how I'm working this. I'm really kind of wiggling this out of the ear canal to try and get this out. Uh, so we're right on the outside edge of the canal there. That looks like a little bit of dry skin. We just, uh, just got sucked into the Zolna tube here really trying to get that next section. You can see that whiter underlayer there. Now that's another piece of dry skin just underneath there. So let's try and wiggle this about. There we go. We're just wiggling away from the canal wall and drawing slightly down the side. And that's just slowly working this next section to the outer part of the ear canal. You can see it's just got that a little bit softer. Let's go in with the Jobson horn now. Now, you I can't speak today. Uh, basically, you know we've used other tools here at the moment, and we've used things like the Ceroscope, the Infoscope, the Flex Loop, all those kind of things coming through as well. Uh, for this particular type of wax, the scoops, so the Infant and Ceroscope, wouldn't really be much use. It would just it wouldn't have the force to pull it forward because that rounded edge, it really wouldn't have the force to pull this forward. This is where the Jobson horn and those kind of corrects. We could possibly use the flex loop for this one as well. And that may well have worked for this one, but the narrowness of the outside edge of the canal there, Jobson horns are better size to go in here for this one. So you can see we've got this softer material. Now we start to break this up. We've got this softer material coming down. You can see it's all starting to free up in there now. Patient was feeling really, really blocked up, uh, you know, really not hearing very well at all. But as you can see, when we take a look behind, you can see all of the skin there is pink. It's kind of, it's not aggravated as such, but it's just really dry and irritated in there. Um, so we're just gonna tidy up a little bit. We wanna avoid these canal walls as best we can. The last thing we wanna do is dig into this at the moment because it just already looks quite pink. You can see how some of the wax right at the back end had become really sluffy and, and soft. Now that can happen sometimes if you get some uh, water trap behind the wax and it can really soften up the rear section of that wax then. Uh, so that's, that's quite common when you get these plugs in here, but we're just tidying up around that outside edge there. Now what you'd normally say to this patient looking at those ear canals post-procedure here, we've got, the, uh, we've got the offending wax away. We don't want to cause any irritation or run any risk of infection by making uh, cuts or grazes in there. So you'd normally say to that patient, look, keep those ears dry now, 24 hours, just let the skin repair itself, toughen itself back up a little bit, and that ear canal will look lovely and healthy. So onto the patient's other ear here. Now you can see how tough this is. Look how the Jobson horn is just 
flicking off the top of this wax. You can see, I'm having to put quite a bit of pressure on this to get this out, so you can really tell just how hardened up this is. Look how the, the, the Jobson horn is actually bending at this point, it is that hard. So you can imagine just how uncomfortable this was for the patient. So we've got the St. Bart's hook in here now. We created a little gap with the Jobson horn. So let's get the St. Bart's hook. If it's that tough, hopefully it'll pull out in one piece. But you can see even the, even the St. Bart's hook is really, really struggling to get through this. Um, and as we get behind, we're trying to get to a really hard piece of wax so it'll draw the whole piece out. But you can see the, the, the St. Bart's hook here is just pulling through. See, that, see how it's breaking that down and breaking it up there a little bit. So yeah, tough as old boots this is. Um, we're just gonna carry on here with the St. Bart's just over the top of this next section. I'm struggling to get this in. Now this is the only down, I'm always really down on the St. Bart's hook. It's a lovely tool. Don't worry, I don't want to cause the offense to St. Bart's hook. But it, it has its limitations in so much as you need quite a wide gap to get that through. Um, so we've gone back to the Jobson horn here. We were just missing that little gap to be able to get that through. And when it starts to loosen like this, you've got the thin end of the hook. It's just going to keep pulling through it. Obviously when you're using a correct, such as the uh, Jobson horn here, it's got that nice wider surface area. It'll get behind us really easily and pull this forwards. But it, even this is, it is so, so tough on this side. Uh, patient has been using a bit of olive oil on here, but I think the surface had just got so hardened up that the olive oil didn't impregnate into it. So we've got the crocodile forceps in here now. So you've had a good range of tools on this one. We've had suction, St. Bart's hook, Jobson horn, and the crocodile forceps in this one. So we're just gonna loosen, there we are. I've got a bit of a, a better grip there on the side. See how it's slowly, slowly pulling out, but it's starting to fold around. So I've switched position now, trying to get it a little bit further behind it because it was starting just to unfold. And we had a good bit of movement there. So I'm just trying to sneak, <laughs> I'm trying to see around the corner. I'm trying to sneak around the corner to bring this down. There we are, just working down that left side, very slowly, steady pressure here. It's on its way. You can see this working out. Oh, it just folded over as it came out there. Uh, so it just almost crashed into the camera. You can see we've got a little bit more that's been pulled forwards now. So let's get behind this next section. You see I'm working around the outside edge there, trying to get down on top. A lot of pressure, steady backwards movement here, drawing this out, it's moving, it's all starting to shift, maintaining that steady pressure now, drawing this out, you can see all the underside there where there's a little bit of uh, skin, and out that popped, it almost crashed into the camera so it came out so quickly. Look at that piece of wax, it is huge. This patient being been, and you imagine having, when you lay on that ear, and there's still more behind it as well, when you lay on that ear, the outer part of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal will fold and flatten slightly, and you imagine pressing against wax that hard, it was so uncomfortable to lie on that side. Right, so you can see it's quite red, it's quite aggravated, you can see where the skin's actually pulled away, you can uh, just a little bit of, not bleeding as such, but you can see where it's just sort of grazed the surface there, a bit further in, this really, really tough, look at this piece of skin at the base of the canal here, how tough this is, now normally I wouldn't be uh, as rough as this on the base of the canal, but this is not going to come away, and any skin then is just going to build up behind it, so I think this has been building for quite a long time, and that wax has gone almost like leather, it was so, so tough, uh, almost like a, like a plastic consistency, you can see there, just on, just on the anterior recess, just either side, where the skin was attached, now that had to come away, and you know, there's no physical bleeding, we haven't, oh my goodness, sorry, I'll go back to that bit now, this is, what's it, five centimeters wax, two inches, but look at the size of those plugs, that central plug there was the one you saw me pick pick up from the second ear. Uh, so just a massive, massive pieces of wax on that side, absolutely humongous. Um, yeah, sorry, I was talking about the, the, the redness to the, the two sides, we got the anterior recess that you could just see on the surface. Basically that redness there is that we haven't broken the surface of the skin. Um, it's almost like a, like a very, very mild version of a blood blister, if you like, so it's, it's just on the surface there. Uh, it's not gonna run any risk of infection or anything. We would obviously maintain with this uh, gentleman as well, you'll keep the ears dry for a couple 24 hours after the procedure and everything will settle down quite quickly but very very relieved to get that out fair play so guys it's friday today so enjoy your weekend i'm actually on leave next week i will try and edit some videos for you while i'm on leave i might not get all three done but um 
yeah, bear with me next week. I'll try and get as many done as I possibly can for you guys. And then I'm not back until the Tuesday of the week after. So I may miss Monday's video. We shall see. I'll see how I get on with the editing. But as always, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of your ears, and take care of one another. Have a fab weekend. Go and enjoy yourself, guys. And I'll see you again on Monday. Bye, everyone.